Okay, to take the pump out, uh, there's four four Allen bolts, and they're tricky to get at. There's one back here, and there's also one behind your fuel stop. Now these Allen wrenches with the ball socket are awesome for that because you can get at the Allen on an angle. Um, and still crack it loose without having to disassemble the pump too far. Uh, this lever, because it's up against the side of the block, is very tight. So an easy way to pull this uh, fuel stop out is to put a nut on it and then double nut the end. Now I lube this up so it spins nice and easy. But put your double nut on, take your wrench, tighten it. And now you can wrench it out with your back nut, like that. And it's a lot easier than being trying to get on the slotted end with a screwdriver at the back. Your fuel lines and everything are out of the way. So it's, it's time consuming because you're turning it an eighth of a turn at a time. But if you lube it up and you get it out far enough, you can just spin it out by hand. Just enough. You don't have to take it all the way out. But now you can get at this um, Allen socket with your ball socket really nice, crack it loose. You've got your, uh, pop your fuel lever out. Um, and that, that's just an O-ring. So if you take the back end of a screwdriver, it's tough and, and just pop it out. Then you can pull your housing, slide it towards the back and then out. And then you'll see your governor spring that's attached to uh, your fuel rod. Okay, so this, this is the part of the pump that hits that uh, pin that was seized. So this is giving it fuel. This is pulling it back So these here are your governor weights So as your engine spinning these weights come out and it pulls back on the fuel So you're limited to your rpm the tougher the spring is the more tension the spring has the harder it pulls on this and um, the weights have to fly farther uh, to overcome that pressure. So when you're doing your fuel uh, spring or, or in your governor spring, sorry, um, this is the part that you're replacing. Very simple, just pull it out, make sure everything's clean. This is our uh, donor 5.9 um, and this pump is no good. So you want to pressure wash that, pull that spring out and pop your new one in again. To put it back on again, you want to pull your fuel pin out so that it doesn't doesn't hit this and then when it's in you can count the threads that were uh, left you can measure the distance or if, you, if you're confident enough you can just crack the nut loose and then spin this out and putting your nut back in the same spot will uh, um, give you pretty well where you left off now you can give it more fuel by cracking this backing it off taking that collar off and putting this in four turns and then it's a runaway so be careful. The best way to adjust this is to have the engine running and have your 2x4 ready over your turbo and I'll show you guys how to do that. So um, we're going to start doing some mods on our pump. Uh, before you do anything, uh, if you're having a smoke issue or you're having a power issue, check the basics. You want to make sure you got a clean air filter and you want to make sure that each one of these uh, connections on your air to air going into your engine is uh, good clamps and no leaks, no cracks in your boots. Your boots aren't hard or stiff, they're, they're nice and flexible. Um, I took the air to air out on this one to eliminate any leaks, any possible uh, extra clamps that are leaking and I'm, I just want to do a direct flow right now and we'll hook the air to air up again afterwards. Um, because we're going to be turning our fuel screw at the back, giving it more fuel, uh, four, t four turns on that screw is a runaway and uh, we want to avoid that. Uh, but I don't know exactly where it is because as you can see this is the housing off of my donor 5.9 because my pin was getting stuck. So you guys want to practice, and I know it sounds silly, choking off the engine because it happens fast and about 3,000, 4,000 RPM is, is max for these engines. They'll run away to 10 grand and you've got yourself an engine uh, job. So um, the only thing, it'll suck rags in, it'll suck uh, uh, cardboard in. So you want a two by four and, and practice grabbing it, having it right where you want it to be, where it can't fall and grab it and then push tight up against it. And it's gonna wanna grab air from anywhere. Um, you might not necessarily choke it out, but what you'll do is keep it from over revving and then you can grab your three quarter inch wrench and crack your injector lines to shut it off without uh, anything. It gets so loud that um, 
I could scream from me to you, you wouldn't be able to hear me, and you start panicking, and it's, it's like a fire uh, uh, 10 feet away. You, you, you don't think straight, so make sure you have that 2x4 ready. Um, well, I've also ran across once as a 5'9", way back when, the turbo blew, and I put all the oil into the air to air. Some of it went out the exhaust, some of it went into the air to air. Um, it ran fine, started good, I, I, I seen the PO, or the work order, and it said change the turbo, I did. Um, I'm not taking a look at my uh, intake pipes, and there was all oil on there. I drove the truck outside, everything were good, throttle was responsive, uh, no problem. And then I pegged it to see what, uh, um, smoke was coming out the tailpipe and the and the air coming out of the turbo actually atomized the oil in the air to air and it was running on the oil by the time I was able to uh, grab the take the air filter off and choke it it was too late and uh, that engine over revved and blew up so that was a twelve thousand dollar job on a truck that was hundred and twenty kilometers past warranty so we're gonna start it up here we're gonna try and choke it out um, even if it doesn't die I'll just shut it off again, but you guys get the picture. Um, three quarter inch wrench handy to uh, crack the injector lines. So here we go. Try it again. Oh, there we go. It's different at an idle as it is at 7,000 RPM or 5,000 RPM. It'll suck air from anywhere it possibly can, so just have that wrench ready. But that worked pretty good. So we're gonna turn that screw a little bit while it's running and see what happens. So what, what I'm doing on the back of the pump, because it's hard to see, is crack your lock nut out and then hold your wrench on it and then take a slotted screwdriver and then we're going to turn it. I'm going to turn it one turn and take it down the road and see what the difference is and then uh, keep an eye on the RPMs and maybe do one more turn and uh, see what our 0 to 80 is again and smoke wise. We're going to turn that aneroid back a little bit too because it's still having excessive smoke. I just cracked that nut loose and tried to start it. And I killed the end, I won't start now because I'm getting so little fuel that I'm sure I've got uh, quite a ways to go before it becomes a runaway. So I'm going to turn it here. That's one turn. It should fire up and as I turn that it's going to rev up higher too on the uh, idle. So you're going to have to turn your throttle back as well. I had to steal one battery out and put it in my dad's truck. <laughs> starts bouncing. I don't know whether that's the gauge or not, but the aneroid 
backed off there. We're not getting any more smoke. So we'll do a zero to 80. And then if you guys have any more suggestions on how to get more boost, even like, even on the cruising, I should have, I should be running at about five pounds or so. And I can see my boots swelling. I don't know if you guys have used these gauges before, whether they're accurate enough. Otherwise, I'm gonna try and get another gauge and uh, plug that in and we'll see what uh, we're doing next week. One, two, three. here and I'm hearing it underneath the hood so I'm gonna check for more leaks and we'll see what happens next week. So we follow a variety of projects that include conversions and repairs to anything from Ferraris to chainsaws and check out the tape boss my newest invention that's coming to market and remember if you're not filthy you're not rich. <laughs>